right, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise into Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakabadash. Love honor to the apostles and the elders of Grand Millstone for teaching us all this truth for well. Uh, I just wanted to get into uh, the, uh, the damnation that's coming to Babylon the Great, all right, the destruction that's coming to Esau, to Sodom and Egypt, which is spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. You know, I just saw a video from one of the elders how the UN, okay, the UN passed for young children to be with older, you know, older people. You know? And this is stuff that's going on from the UN, man. You know? You read that in the, in the book of uh, Revelations 13. Okay? It goes into that. It goes into the, the beast, the image of the beast. You know? The whore, which is Babylon the Great America. Okay? And then it goes into the beast, which is uh, uh, the UN, NATO. Okay? And the UN just passed that law that that adults okay can have relations with with children you know with minors you know they can give consent you know that's because this is the the the, the work of Esau Edom man you know the world being upside down I read that uh, last time I was out you know I went into that how the, all the foundations of the world are out of course Psalms 82 you know and that's because of this damn devil man so the destruction that's coming is, is, is suited you know it's very well suited to this man which is known as the man of sin so I want to start off with a uh, second Thessalonians all right and go into that I also wanted to go into uh, the book of Joel you know the ones was uh, a few other books You know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, but let me get this one real quick. This is uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse, let me start off at the top. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, and by our gathering to gather unto him. All right? So our gathering is of what? Of our people. Okay? The Israelites. You may not call yourself an Israelite, okay? Because you don't know about your, your family's uh, 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 history, okay? Your bloodline's history your heritage okay but we believe through the spirit that we're israelites why because we can receive this word you know you have a bunch of camps out there that that put the the sign up saying that edomites can make it moabites can make it you know and how many of them actually uh, um converted any Edomites over, man. You know? How many of them actually converted uh, Moabites? You know, Hamites. How many of them actually converted? None. You know? And it's very simple. There's nothing to convert. You can't convert another nation. Okay? You can't be grafted back in if you were never in. Okay, so that pertains to simply the Israelites, right? That's what it all pertains to. You know, so like, I had to make sure it was, it was recorded, you know? But that's who it pertains to, Israel. You see? So in, in verse 1, Thessalonians 2 and 1, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, all right, which are the brothers, the ones that are in the, in the truth, Right? That speak the same as we. It says, by the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach and by our gathering together unto him. Which is what? Whenever Yahweh Shai comes back. You know? 
So there was a time period after Yahweh Shai where there was a lot more believers. Okay. Where they followed after the ways of Yahweh Shai, right? Keeping of the laws, statutes, commandments, and the ones that were grafted in, okay, would keep the smallest of the law, statutes, and commandments, okay, to kind of, you know, being born again when you're born as an Israelite baby, all right, the job of your parents for 12 years is to raise you up to be a good woman or to be a good man under the law of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, right? So the same thing coming into this faith, the job of the fathers, which are the elders, the elder apostles, okay, was to teach you good, uh, good teachings, right? To raise you up. You know, that's why in the scriptures it said, Judah, who shall raise you up? You know, and it was Yahweh Shai, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai, he raised up our elders, which raised us up, right? And now we have to raise the remaining, you know? That way we can gather up faith, you know? Gather up faith for salvation. So it says, uh, verse 2, Now ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, you see? Nor by letter, as from us as the day of Mashiach is at hand, okay? And a lot of people are saying, oh, well, how do you know it's the end of the days? And, and how do you know the end is coming? And it's been coming, right? It's been coming and it started long time ago, you know? Look at that. It started long ago, man. You know, this isn't something new that just recently happened oh this marks the the beginning of the end of the days you know in 2000 and whatever all right it started when Yahweh Shai entered the scene right so let me get that the book of Hebrews Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. Yahweh, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. You see? As in these last days, very end man you know we're at the very end when Yahweh Shai was born that marked the beginning of the end okay and then when Yahweh Shai was crucified and whenever he came back okay that finalized the beginning of the end why because it was written in stone and when Yahweh Shai played through it it's not going to be done again okay it doesn't have to be redone because it's been done you know so Yahweh Shai, that's why nobody else has been able to do what Yahweh Shai did, man. You know? And we've been knowing the scriptures in the time past. Okay? We knew what the scripture would say. You know, that's why you have other religions that Israelites created. Okay? In, in a type of remembrance or in a type of uh, uh, figurative um, symbols to what would happen with the scriptures, you know? They'll talk about a, a, a deity that was to come and save us, you know? Because they had been written from the beginning, you know? Whenever Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, it was, it was, it was written then, you know? That the seed of a woman So look.
that the seed of the woman, all right, would bring forth one contrary to the, the seed of, of, of the serpent. You know, that's why you had Semiramis or Ishtar, which is not what you celebrate, all right, because people celebrate Easter, celebra celebrating after Ishtar with the bunny and the, and the egg, okay? That's not what you celebrate in these times. In these times, you celebrate the Passover, okay? But they celebrate uh, Ishtar, you know, which said to herself, okay, in a, in a devious manner, that she was going to create, you know, a replica so she can stay in power to what the scriptures were saying, which whenever she brought forth a child, uh, years, okay, years after... Uh, what's his name? Nimrod died. Okay, which was her son. She said that the baby she was carrying was Nimrod's son when when she probably just got you know one of her her slaves or whatever to do it. You know, and then when that child was brought up, you know that's how you had a lot of major religions that were brought forth. You know, and on that topic, she planted an evergreen tree. Okay, or there was an evergreen tree that sprung up in the middle of of the night and uh they started taking gifts to that evergreen tree in remembrance of of nimrod okay which was in december 25th you know that's why you put those trees up in your houses in december 25th you know and bring presents to it because it all goes back to ancient babylon man you know but this devil esau edom has set up everything in order to to mimic okay and in order to 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 reverence okay in a form of praise the uh, uh the the roman system and the ancient babylonian system and the ancient egyptian system and all things that are ad adverse to yahabashim yahushai you know so it says second thessalonians 2 and verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay? So it said, let no man deceive you. All right? Don't let anyone deceive you by any means. Okay? Because those times are not going to come until there's a falling away. And like I went back after Yahawashai, there was a big unison of Israelites following after Yahawashai, but then came a falling away, right, which was the Renaissance period, which is said to be about 500, 400 AD, okay, around that time, you know, up until 15, 1500, 1600, you know, so that little bit of time is whenever Jake was in control, Jake was in power. You know, and guess what happened in that time? Esau Edom had a renaissance, which was around the 1600s, you know, which is around the time where this book, you know, was written. There was a few before that, you know, when everything was revised and, and translated right in the nick of time, man. And after all that, you had Esau Edom that came into power. You know, and like the scriptures say, he must be loose for a little season. All right, before the Lord comes back, man. You know? And this little season is on, on its last leg. Right? It's already at the very end. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Okay, so we have the falling away. Right, whenever Israelites were put under captivity under Esau, and whenever uh, uh, we were put in that mindset of, of being inferior, right? It says, and that man of sin be revealed, which is happening now, the son of perdition, okay? Which is happening right now. The man, the man of sin is being revealed, the son of perdition, that goeth into perdition, and that word perdition means destruction, okay? 
So who who is the son of destruction? You know, scriptures always talk about two major two major influences. Okay, you have one being Jacob, and you have two Esau Edom. So this is Second Ezra, chapter six, and let's start off at the very top, six and one. And he said unto me, in the beginning, when the earth was made, before the borders of the world stood, or ever the winds blew, before it thundered and lightened, or ever the foundations of paradise were laid, before the fair flowers were seen, or ever the movable powers were established, before the innumerable multitude of angels were gathered together, or ever the heights of the air were lifted up, before the measures of the firmament were named, or ever the chimneys of Zion were hot. Okay? Then did I consider these things, and they were all made through me alone, and through none other, by me also shall that be ended, and by none other. You know? So like Yahweh Shai said, the Most High is the one that holds everything in control, man. Okay? Yahweh Shai is not going to go behind his father's back and leave two minutes early, okay, before the campaign starts, okay? Yahweh Shai is waiting, the angels are waiting for the Most High to say go. You know? There's no moving, there's no, you know? Whenever the Most High speaks, that's when it's going to happen. It's luck. You know? There's no way around it. There's no way around the hand of the Most High, man. Okay? So the Most High considered all these things that are, that are happening right now. Down to the, the most minute detail. The Most High considered it all. There's nothing that happened on this earth that the Most High says. That was surprising. You know? The Most High set everything up, man. All powerful. Allah Shadia. Okay? Demonic like power, man. A fearful one, you know? To the most high considered, to consider something, okay, is to be in deep thought of something, okay? When you consider and you weigh your options, right? When you consider to, to move to a different job or stay at your current job, you weigh the options, okay? Say you have 20 jobs that you're considering. You're weighing the options. If I go over here, I won't be able to do this. I won't be able to do that. If I stay where I'm at, I'll continue to do what I'm doing and I'll be able to stay in a good spot. Maybe I won't be financially rich, but I'll also be financially stable. But if I go over there, I'll be financially rich, but I won't be able to do this and I won't be able to do that. You're weighing all your options, okay? The most high consider these things and said, this is the path I want to be taken. Okay? And he laid it into play. You know? And then you have idiot uh, Israelites out there, you know, saying that Esau can make it. Esau can make it into the kingdom of heaven. He can't make it, man. He won't make it. He's not going to make it. All right? Not in ships, but in chains. Second Ezra chapter 6. In verse 5, and ere the present years were sought out, and or ever the inventions of them that now sin were turned before they were sealed up, that have gathered faith for a treasure. You see, then did I consider these things, and they were all made through me alone, and through none other, by me also shall that be ended. And by none other. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or what shall be the end of the first 
in the beginning of it that follow it. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, from Jacob and uh, Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. See? So Esau is the end of the world, man. So guess who's in rulership now that we're at the end of the world? You know? Esau, Edom. And guess who's going to follow after? Okay? Guess who's going to be in command after? You know? It's simple. The scriptures are very simple, man. You know? And it's not that Christianity, lovey-dovey, you know, everybody loves everybody type of deal, man. Because the Most High is not dealing with, with big numbers, okay? In the sense of saving, you know, a, a vast majority of the human population, okay? The Most High is about saving His elect, you know? And you should strive to be one of those numbers. You should strive to be one of those numbers, man. You know? We don't know if we are, okay? But you striving to be one of those numbers is gonna, it's gonna be a good cause. Right? So it says, going back to the man of, of sin, okay, which is Esau Edom, the son of perdition. This is Revelations 17. Well, let me get it up here. This is uh, Revelation 17 and 10. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is. And the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. You see? So the seven heads in Revelation 13, okay, goes from the uh, uh, Greek empire, all right, which the first Greek uh, king would be... Uh, uh, Alexander the Greek or the Creek okay you had Germania major Germania minor okay or upper and lower all right you had the Roman Empire which makes four after those four we had the thousand year period right after the thousand year period then we had the uh, the Spanish we had the French and we had the English as the seven. Those are the seven heads. And the eighth is of the seven. What came out from the seventh? From the English? It was America, Babylon the Great. Okay? So that's the, the son of perdition. All right? That goeth into perdition. That's the kingdom of, of Esau. Babylon the Great, America. Okay? That's his kingdom that goeth into perdition. And then he's going to go into perdition. Right? Um... What was it? Uh, Psalms chapter 2. And I will give thee that, the heathen for that inheritance. Okay? And the outermost parts of the world for thy possession. This has all been given to Yahweh Shai, man. You know? The land that we walk on, the land that's, that is, is technically already Yahweh Shai's. It's been written in stone. You know? We just haven't played through all the parts that we need to play through. Like the Mark of the Beast has to still come out. Okay? Which is the RFID. You know? The Mark of the Beast still has to come out. And be pressed upon the world. Then after the Mark of the Beast, it's the persecution of the saints. Because of what we speak. You know, and we see the censoring already happening. You know, we see the censoring is already happening, man. There's going to be persecution before and persecution after the mark of the beast. Okay, to the saints. Really to all Israel, but mostly to the saints. Because that's who they're trying to take out. Esau 
Esau, Edom is is uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Esau, Edom is Babylon and Dayton. Esau, Edom is Dayton. Uh, Psalms 137. All right, you can read. You can read the whole chapter. Let's keep it right down to the bottom as far as it's going to of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Okay? This is what's happening now. Okay? That tells you that in the book of Judges as well. Um, there shall we rehearse the righteous acts. That's what we're rehearsing now, man. The righteous acts. Right? It says, we hang our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for they that carried us a way captive required of us a song that they wasted us they that wasted us required of us mirth saying sing us one of your songs of Zion okay how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land and it's happening you know we haven't sang the Lord's song which you know I used to really want to know what the Lord's song was man you know I remember those days when I read that that we all sing together the song of Moses, which is what the, the song of the Lord, man. You know, and it's a beautiful thing to be in this time. Hearing the song of the Lord being cried out throughout the world, man. Which is by wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You know? It's a lot. It's a beautiful thing. But it says, verse, uh, jumping down, uh, verse 5, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, Raise it, raise it even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones, man. Okay. See? That ought to be destroyed. Perdition means destruction. The son of perdition must be destroyed. Okay? In that great city, the great city of Babylon, that's going to be destroyed is America. You see? So all that pedophilia that, that Esau Edom has going on. Okay? All the, uh, 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 what is that uh, word I'm looking for? All that sodomy that Esau, Esau Edom, okay? Esau Edom, you know, wants to push out of the vibration to the world. Most High is coming back to get rid of all that nasty and uncleanliness. Okay? How about Shem Yahushai is coming back to set order, man? You know? Why? Because the world is at disorder. You see? So Yahweh Shai coming back is to set everything straight. That's how we know, man. But to the Israelites, to us pertaineth salvation, right? Those that stay with Yahweh Shem Yahushai, to them pertain salvation. Let me get this one. Right. Let Matthew 11. Let me 
gonna start off at let's start off at verse 10. It says, Behold, behold, this is he whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding. He that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And that's why King David said, I'd rather be a, a, a janitor in the house of my Lord, man. You know? That's why King David said that, man. The book of Psalms. You know? Because you being a janitor in the kingdom of heaven, you're greater and more mightier, okay, than the greatest prophet that we had. John the Baptist. You know? That's how that that's the type of level that Israel is gonna be at, man. You know? Which does not pertain to all uh, uh all the world, just Israel. It says verse verse eleven. Continuing on, it says Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, even until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth much violence, and the violent take it by force. Okay, so who are they? Esau Edom was known to be a conqueror. What happened to the Latin tribes? Okay? With the conquistadors, right? They came out and conquered. What happened to the natives in the US? They were conquered by who? Esau. You know? It all goes back to that, man. You know? The, the perpetual hate that Esau had towards uh, Jacob, you know, you can read that in Psalms, I believe it was 27 Psalms 27 the time of mourning cometh for my father you know and after the death of, of Isaac, Esau seek to kill Jacob you know, and that stayed with their families it says verse 13, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you will receive it, this is Elijah, which was to come. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. You know, because we have something that's called uh, reincarnation. You know, that's what our ancestors believe. That's what the scriptures say. And that's what we believe, man. You know, but the kingdom of, of, of heaven suffered much violence, man. And the violent take it by force. You know? So guess what's going to happen to the violent man that takes things by force? Destruction. Perdition. You know? This is, uh... Isaiah, no, let me get... Joel real quick. Daniel. You know, to those... To the, to the Jakes out there, man, that don't want to side with you, how about Shimei was shy? All right, they want to side with this uh, Edomite. Okay? When that time of trouble comes, and when the time of trouble hits, you're not going to be crying to Esau Edom, man. Okay? You're going to try and remember that name. Okay? The name that was given to us by Yahweh, by his son Yahweh Shai. You're going to try and remember the names that you made fun of for so long, right? So it says, Joel chapter two and verse one, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of Yahweh cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of dark clouds and of thickness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people, and the strong there hath never been ever the like, neither shall be any more after, even to 
the years of many generations. Okay? So he saw something frightening just like uh, uh, Ezra did. Ezra saw something frightening. Right? And he wept and he cried. You know? Samuel prophesied of something similar. John prophesied of something similar. Yahawashai spoke of something similar. And those similarities are the same thing. The end of the world, man. And that's what's coming. You know? That's what's coming. It's right around the corner. You see? So it says, Joel chapter 2 and verse 3, A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. And the land is as a garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. And going back up, a fire devoureth before them. Okay, so before them, there's there's a fire, right? Whenever you look at the uh, at the silos or shilos, uh, which hold the nuclear missiles, when you see the missiles go up, there's a fire before them. Okay, which is what pushes them out, right? It says, and a flame, and behind them a flame burneth. All right, so going into the fire devoureth before them and a flame burneth behind them. Those missiles were meant to destroy, man. So before them, they're going to destroy, okay? And behind them, that fire is what pushes them out. It's a lot. Right, so it says... The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, okay? So before them, right in front of them, is as the Garden of Eden, which means what? The word Eden is Adama, which is pleasure, right? Pleasure, something pleasurable, okay? You look at the land and the land is pleasurable, you know? That's why you have millions of people that live here in Babylon. Because the land is pleasurable. Okay? It says, and behind them, a desolate wilderness. Which means after the missiles hit, there's a wilderness. Which we see that uh, when you look at pictures of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You look at pictures of Hiroshima, how it was before. To Hiroshima, how it was, how it is now. Okay? You see the destruction that it caused. And that was... That was one of the weakest, you know, uh, nuclear bombs uh, uh, to date, you know, because it was the first ones that were invented and created. Compared to the ones we have now, that's nothing, you know? Now the ones we have burn, you know, way hotter than, than those, 10 times, tenfold, you know? So it says, and behind them a desolate wilderness, which is how Hiroshima and Nagasaki were left, a wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them, okay? Nothing is gonna be able to escape those ICBMs. And like we read in, uh, uh, in uh, Revelation 13, it's all caused by Esau, okay? And it, when you read in the book of Job, it says whenever he's it, about to start enjoying his food, okay? The Lord will cause that to fall back on him. You know? Which means what? He's going to throw everything up that he had prior. You know? All the riches he gained. All of the uh, uh, um, status. All of that is going to be thrown back out into the world. And he's going to be left with nothing. You know? So it says, The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses which represents strength, you know? And in armies like the Egyptians and like the um, like the Greek, their armies, when you saw the, the number of their horses that represented their arsenal, their weaponry, okay? Which Esau, Esau's uh, blessing was the sword, you know? Weaponry, you see? So the appearance of them is the appearance of horses. Okay, when somebody sees a nuclear missile, that, that represents status and power. Okay, 
when somebody says the U.S. has this much more than, than China, that means the U.S. is more powerful than China. Okay? So it says, and, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Okay? Like the noise of chariots, in the tops of mountains shall they leap. Okay? They're going to leap. Just like in uh, uh, Jeremiah 50, it goes into, and in Jeremiah 51, it goes into shooting the arrow from across the world, man. From one end of the earth to the other. You know? You can't possibly shoot an arrow, okay, from one end of the earth. If I shoot the arrow from here, it doesn't come back all the way around to here. Okay? All the way around the world. It doesn't work like that, man. You know? From one end of the earth to the other, which means what? The silos. You know? The ICBM. We're going to shoot out those missiles from mountain to mountain, which is talking about government. A mountain is a representation of a government. So from one government to another, which sounds like what? World War III. Right? That says, like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. Okay? When you hear that crackling, that's the same crackling you're going to hear from the chariots, I mean from the ICBMs being shot from one end of the earth to the other. <clears throat> right? So it says, as a strong people set in battle array. Which means what? Metal. Right? They're set in metal. Okay? And they're ready for battle. It says, before their faces, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. Okay? When you go into that word blackness, it's talking about shame. Okay? But... When you go into any movie that depicts, okay, or anything that depicts any type of wartime, okay, the people's faces are much pain. You can see sorrow in their face. You know, there's this one movie, um, I can't remember which one. I know that uh, Marvel has one, and then who else? Uh, Terminator has one. Okay, whenever the, the missiles shoot out and you can see them coming down, okay, the people's faces just are in so much pain. They're crying, they're in awe, they're in disbelief. Men's hearts failing them for those things that are to come, you know? Heart attacks, you're gonna get heart attacks from seeing the destruction that's oncoming, you know? It's gonna be a, a beautiful time, but it's gonna be a very scary time, you know? So it says, like the noise of the chariot to the top of the mountain shall they leap. All right, so from one government to another. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as strong people set in battle array, because it's going to be wartime. Before their faces the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Whenever you see that blast radius, it's like wartime, man. You know? When you see any movie, any old movie about old time war and how people would run through houses and, you know, jump this wall, go over here and attack over here. That's what those ICBMs are for, to do all the destruction without a single human being in, in, in place to do it, right? So when that, that ICBM hits, that rat, that blast radius, okay, is what starts tearing things down, man. And the more powerful the impact, the bigger the destruction, the more waste that happens. So it says, they shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march everyone in his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. That means there's not going to be destruction upon those uh, uh, ICBMs, right? Neither shall one thrust another, you see, so there's not going to be any touching of ICBMs. They shall walk everyone in his path, that means their designated uh, uh, land zone, <clears throat> and when they fall upon the sword, which is the defense system, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city, and they shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses, and they shall enter into the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars will withdraw their shining. And Yahweh shall utter his voice before his army and his camp is very great and he is strong that exceedeth his word 
for the day of Yahweh is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? You see? So to Esau, Edom, and all of the, the, the foolery that he's got going on, there is an end to it, okay? There is an end to it, okay? Which means there is a beginning to righteousness. So with that, I want to give our honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakudash, Shalom.